The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my father's name testify to me. But you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my father has given me is greater than all else and no one can snatch it out of the father's hand. The father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it is Mother's Day. Again, happy Mother's Day to all who are mothers. Sometimes this is a bittersweet day or a sad day for folks who, whose mothers are not alive or people who did not have good mothering. There are many people in the world who were not mothered well. So we give thanks for the good mothering and we say prayers for all those this day for whom it's a difficult day. It's also the feast day of St. Julian of Norwich, one of my favorites, as you know, because I quote her all the time. And it is Good Shepherd Sunday. Now, I know that Good Shepherd Sunday comes every year, but this year it snuck up on me because John and I left right after Easter and have been on vacation for two weeks, and so we missed the second and third Sundays of Easter with you. But every year on the fourth Sunday of Easter, we get a reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And he tells us that he is the one who will lay down his life for the sheep. And so this Sunday is known in the Episcopal Church, at least, as Good Shepherd Sunday. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about sheep and then about the Good Shepherd. I don't think many of us have had much time with sheep. If anybody has, you know, raise your hand and wave, or wave it around. I, I haven't spent much time around sheep. Horses, I know. Cats and dogs, I know. Hamsters, I know. But sheep. Why did Jesus use the metaphor of sheep and shepherd? I don't know about you, but I would much prefer to think of myself as a horse than a sheep. Why? Because one thing I do know about sheep is that they are not very smart. Unlike horses, which can live by themselves in the wild, they can't really get along by themselves. Brother Curtis Almquist, one of the brothers from the Society of St. John the Evangelist, spent some time a few years ago with a shepherd and his flock in Northern California and had a lot of observations about sheep. So a little bit of what he says. Curtis says, for one, Jesus is calling us sheep, which is not exactly a compliment. 
sheep require an enormous amount of care and work. Sheep are prone to get lost and to be lost. No bearings. Absolutely clueless. He goes on. If the shepherd takes his eye off the sheep, sure enough, they will wander. They get stuck. They fall into ravines, which is why the shepherd's rod and staff are absolutely essential. The staff, and you know, because the, our bishop carries one, right? It's a shepherd's crook. The staff is used to hook either a back leg or the neck of a sheep when it needs to be rescued. Now, our bishop doesn't use that that way, but that is where that that's where that comes from. The sim, the the shepherd's crook was used to pull the sheep up by the leg or by the neck. He goes on to say, the shepherd will use this staff to rescue the sheep from rocks or thickets or to catch a sheep in need of medical care. And the rod is used to prod the sheep along and also to ward off predators. Well, what do you think about this metaphor of sheep? As you reflect on your own spiritual life, what do you see? Does that sheep behavior sound familiar after all? I have to agree and, and admit that it does. I imagine most all of us have gotten lost at one time or another or gotten stuck. I know I have. Maybe we've wandered off the path not even knowing what we're doing, wandered a bit from the shepherd for a while, gotten into a little or maybe a lot of trouble, maybe even fallen into a ravine where we were desperately in need of rescue. Maybe Jesus wasn't so far off in his use of the metaphor of sheep and shepherd, considering our human nature. Well, back to our friends, the sheep. Brother Curtis goes on to say that except for headbutting, which certainly humans do, <laughs> or running away, the sheep have no ability to defend themselves. And then he talks about in the 23rd Psalm, the psalmist says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me, not they protect me or they rescue me, which is really what, what they do, but they comfort me. Why comfort, he asks, because of the shepherd's interventions. He goes on to say that necessary interventions, whether with sheep or with people, can be very difficult. Sometimes, quite painful, and yet ultimately for the good. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The good shepherd will intervene to rescue you when you need it. He says it may be quite difficult for you, even painful, but it will not be bad. You will ultimately find comfort and strength in the Good Shepherd's intervention with the rod or the staff. Can you think of a time in your life when the Good Shepherd intervened for you? When the Good Shepherd rescued you from something small or something big, when you needed rescuing? Perhaps it was a difficult, painful intervention, or perhaps it was an easier thing. I invite you to remember that time today and this week and give thanks for those times, that time or those times 
when the Good Shepherd has intervened for you. So we've looked at sheep and sheep behavior in ourselves. And now we look to the Good Shepherd himself. How wonderful it is to know that the Good Shepherd will intervene to rescue us when we need it. And why? Simply because we belong to him. Nothing more, nothing less. We belong to him. It doesn't depend upon how we feel or what experiences we have or do not have, whether we have doubts or what we have or have not accomplished. What matters is that the shepherd knows us and we belong to him. My sheep hear my voice, Jesus says. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. So on Good Shepherd Sunday, we remember that Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is always inviting us to follow him. O oh God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Amen.